Hello! Now, as you are no doubt aware, this year is the 30th anniversary of the Mazda MX-5 and to help celebrate that, Mazda has gathered together examples of all four generations of the car and I'm going to drive them back to back and let you know how the car has evolved over the three decades that it has been on sale. The obvious place to start is of course with the NA or Mark 1 and this is a particularly nice example we have here. It's a UK car, it's a 1990, it's got very low mileage, totally original condition on standard wheels, standard suspension, all that kind of thing. So it'll be a really nice place to start this story and see how the Mazda MX-5 has evolved. I'll be driving this one, then I'll be driving an MB, an NC, and then finally the 30th anniversary edition of the current ND. Quite a lot to get through, let's hit the road. <laughs> So it makes sense to start the story with the first of the line and while you're probably perfectly familiar with MX-5s there are a few bits and bobs about this car that are worth talking about aren't there particularly in this 30th anniversary year and also just to kind of enjoy what a lovely example of the car we have here now this one as I say is a 1990 it's a UK spec car a 1.6 and it's got just 36,000 miles on it. It's part of Mazda's heritage fleet. And it's a really, really lovely thing. Now, as I say, you're probably familiar with the MX-5 story already, but just to recap, the car was designed in the mid 80s after American journalist called Bob Hall sketched out the idea for a sort of retro rear-wheel drive roadster to Mazda's boss and said you really should make something like this. It took them a while. The car was eventually launched in 1989 as we know but the story of how they came up with this car is really quite interesting because Bob Hall, designer Tom Matano and all the other engineers and people who worked on the car they were all car nuts and they particularly liked the sort of 1960s and early 70s European roadsters like MGBs, Triumph Spitfires, Fiat 124s, Alfa Romeo Spiders, things like that. They're all based in California, they all had these cars and what they kind of figured out was that there was nothing in the market at that time that was really like that and the old cars were getting a bit unreliable the new ones were too expensive so what they wanted to do was kind of go back to the roots of simple lightweight rear-wheel drive sports cars which weren't about performance in a straight line or big numbers or anything like that more just about handling but you probably know all that anyway so why am I repeating what you already know you want to know what this car is like well just really really nice it rides quite high on its suspension like most standard MX-5s do so it feels quite soft and roly-poly you can probably see it kind of rolling about when I do that but that's kind of all part of the charm with an MX-5 and this one on a sunny day like this on a on an English B row just makes absolute perfect sense now there's some argument about whether these cars are better with the 1.6 or the 1.8. There's not a huge power difference between them. Some people think that the 1.6 is a little bit revier and a little bit nicer. Others prefer the little bit of extra torque you get in the 1.8. They're obviously very popular with people modifying them and tweaking them. And indeed that was kind of in the plan from the start. The guys at Mazda wanted people to modify these cars and kind of make them their own, personalise them, customise them, do whatever they wanted with them, so they kind of provided people a blank canvas to make of it what they will. Saying that, it's really nice to be in a, an absolutely standard one and kind of drive it as Mazda intended. You know, the things that you notice, you'll no doubt be aware of the old Jimba Itai thing, the horse and rider as one philosophy, and that is manifested in everything from the really short throw of the gear shift to the steering response to the sound of the engine to the look of the engine with that kind of lotus inspired cam cover and just the fact that this is a car that you need to rev 
unlike modern sports cars which are all about turbocharged torque and all that kind of thing this car needs yeah it needs to be revved like that and it's an absolute delight so it'll be really interesting as I drive the other cars to see how that spirit kind of evolved and changed how they adapted that for modern tastes new technologies things like that so with that in mind let's switch to the NB or Mark II so to the Mark II MX-5 or NB if you're using Mazda's internal designation. Now the most obvious change for this car was the switch from pop-up lights of the first generation to the fixed ones of this. That was down to safety regulations changing and it does kind of rob the car of one of its most distinctive styling features but the Mark II is still a handsome and popular car. This particular one is a 10th anniversary edition from 1999. It's one of the, the pre-facelift NBs. They did change the headlights and the front bumper a little bit but generally speaking it's, uh, it's a good representation of a Mark II and a very nice example too with a few extra trimmings I'll talk about in due course. Now as well as the fixed headlights the looks change a little bit the sculpted sides are a little bit smoother you've got conventional door handles here a glass rear screen for the soft top and a, and a slightly bigger boot but does that change the way it drives on the road let's go and find out so how does a mark ii mx5 feel different from the mark one well this 10th anniversary edition is fully loaded with a a very fancy interior with this blue leather trim and blue Alcantara on the seats and it straight away the interior of this car feels a lot more substantial than a Mark 1. It's a, a more sort of premium feeling car. Mazda obviously wanted to kind of move away from the Mark 1's kind of back to basics feel and, and make the MX-5 feel a little bit more luxurious, all things relative. Fundamentally though it's still a very very similar car underneath because it uses basically the same chassis the same engines 1.6 and 1.8 but it does kind of add a few new features of its own so those include on the kind of sportier versions like this one um, a six-speed manual gearbox and Bilstein dampers and a Torsen limited slip differential. Now, those had featured on some of the kind of Japanese import versions of the Mark 1 before, but um, they were kind of new for UK market cars and the rest of the world. So, the Mark 2 was a kind of a bit more of a it's a bit more of a serious car. It doesn't kind of rattle or shake as much as the Mark 1. I say it feels like a much more kind of refined and all-round car. So, and as a result, some people think it's perhaps not as characterful as the Mark 1. I think it's, um, I think perhaps they're missing the point. It's, it's actually, it's still very much an MX-5. Still they've got that kind of lightweight feel and the whole Jimba Itai spirit. The six-speed gearbox is a nice addition. Gives you a bit more, a few more options on how to drive it. And just the kind of, the way it feels more substantial and refined just adds a kind of new a new side to the MX-5 and uh, these are now very affordable cars to buy new as well there's a bit of hype about Mark 1s and Mark 3s are kind of quite affordable as well so the, the Mark 2 is sort of squeezed between the two so there's some absolute bargains to be had out there Obviously some people know there's, there's some known issues like rust and things like that which you have to be aware of but if you're out for a bargain MX-5 this could be the one
So here we are with the Mark III MX-5, which represents a big step in the MX-5 evolution, given that the Mark I and II were basically the same, sharing the same engines and chassis. This one is all new underneath, totally different car. Now the styling kind of harks back to the Mark I. It's kind of a, a reinterpretation of the original styling, obviously without the pop-up lights, but it has a more a retro look. But don't be fooled, because it's a much more modern car underneath in terms of its suspension. It's got all new engines, a 1.8 and a 2.0-litre, co-developed with Ford. They say totally different from what went before. This is the 25th anniversary edition with its rather natty soul red paint. It's from one of the later generation of facelifted Mark III's. There were two major facelifts, Mark 3.5 and what people often call Mark 3.75. This is one of the, the later models. And it has a very different character to the other two, as we'll discover when we get out on the road. So to the Mark III, and as I say, one of the, the bigger steps in MX-5 evolution. This is, as I was explaining before, a completely different car from the Mark I and II. And it kind of feels it, although there are a few more kind of retro flourishes like the dials and things like that, and it does have a, a kind of traditional feel about it. It also is a, a much, much more modern car. It feels from a, a completely different age compared with the Mark I and II. And that offers you a few more options when considering whether you want to have one of these over one of the earlier cars. Now, it is fundamentally still an MX-5, of course, so you've still got that lovely Revy engine, this new MZR motor, although, as I say, it was co-developed with Ford, has a very Mazda-like character. It's nice and Revy, and 160 horsepower is quite a serious uplift in performance and as per the Mark II the sportier versions came with six-speed gearboxes and Bilstein dampers and limited slip diffs so it feels a more substantial car than the Mark II definitely you can feel how it's progressed in that sense and everything's just more modern this one's got touchscreen navigation system in it the switches and everything like that just feel more substantial and it feels like a, a car you could use every day rather than perhaps a kind of Sundays and weekends car like you might consider a Mark 1 and Mark 2 now one thing about the Mark 3 is it's, it's a little bit heavier than the Mark 1 and Mark 2 and indeed the Mark 4 as well but it's still light compared with most modern cars and it's still got that lovely MX-5 chuckability, that lovely rear-wheel drive balance, really nice steering feel and in fact if you're looking for a kind of more substantial car, in some ways the Mark III feels a bit more solid than any of the others, Mark IV included, so although it's an older car than the current one, it, it does have its own character as well. Other things that came in with the Mark III were the options of things like the, uh, the folding metal hardtop, which this car has. That was a very popular addition. It only added about 30-odd kilos to the weight of the car. So like any MX-5, the Mark III has that lovely chuckable rear-wheel drive rose to balance about it. And it's just perfect on a twisty B road like this. Huge amount of fun. It just carries it off a little bit more sophistication and substance than the others. How does it compare with the Mark IV? Well, let's go and find out. And so to the Mark IV, or ND, the car that carries the MX-5 into its third decade and represented here in spectacular 30th anniversary edition form. Now, the Mark IV is an all-new car based on Mazda's Skyactiv engineering philosophy. Skyactiv is also the name applied to the brand new engine range. There's a 1.5 and a 2.0-litre, totally different from the Ford-based units in the Mark III. And the whole car was built with this kind of weight-saving philosophy to make it feel more like the Mark I of 30 years ago and kind of restore some of that original Jimba Itai spirit. Now, what sets this car apart from regular Mark IVs? Well, it's got the orange paint, which is a very obvious addition. We've got these lovely raised wheels, some Brembo calipers on the front, Recaro seats inside, loads of Alcantara, so this is a, a pretty special car. Now the Mark IV was intended to bring back some of that spirit of the car when it launched 30 years ago. How do they do that? Well, let's hit the road and find out. So how 
has Mazda managed to make the Mark IV feel like the Mark I of 30 years ago? Well, it all comes down to weight saving. The most impressive thing about this car, I think, is the fact that in its lightest form, in the 1.5, it weighs only 50 kilos more than a Mark I. That's absolutely incredible in a modern age where most new cars are bigger and heavier than their predecessors. They've got more power, fatter tires, all that kind of thing. No, Mazda's gone completely the other way and made this car just as lightweight and minimal as its original, uh, but with all the kind of features and mod cons you'd expect in a new car. Now, I really like the design of the Mark IV. It looks very different from the, all the other three cars. It has a, a style of its own, and it's a much more modern looking machine. There's some really neat touches, like the way this body colored plastic on the inside ties in with the body outside. That's to encourage you to drop the roof at any given opportunity. The uh, slightly strange humps on the bonnet make more sense when you're sitting in the car as well, because those little peaks in the top of the bonnet, they actually correspond to the steering axis which all sounds very technical but it means that when you steer your eye is naturally drawn to the way the wheel is rotating it just kind of ties you in to the way the car is behaving on the road that's the old Jimba Itai in a new iteration so yes the Mark IV is a very faithful recreation of what set the MX-5 apart all, that, all those years ago and what that means on the road is a car that feels just like that 30 year old original in the sense that it is really light it just it's just so nimble and adjustable on the road the engine revs it's again not about straight line performance no mx5 is of course but it's just about that kind of joyful balance of a lightweight rear wheel drive sports car and the new engine on this car so the the mark IV has recently had a uh, an update to its engine range both the 1.5 and the 2 litre the 2 litre is the one that gets the really big upgrade so it goes from 160 horsepower to 184 and it gets kind of strengthened internals and a higher rev limit things like that so it's it's a significantly improved car and it's just got this now this is a, a faster mx5 than there ever has been before but it's one that is totally in tune with the kind of the origins and the traditions that made it such a hit 30 years ago and that's such an impressive achievement by Mazda. I don't think there's really any other manufacturer who's doing that in this day and age. So for maintaining that spirit, that all important spirit in the car, Mazda is to be absolutely celebrated and this 30th anniversary car really is a fitting tribute to everything that the MX-5 stands for. Let's just hope we'll be driving another one for the 40th anniversary, the 50th anniversary, the 60th anniversary. Why should it ever stop? Keep them coming, I say.